Let's bring in Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz right now. He joins us. Uh, Senator, you tweeted, as we pointed out a moment ago, you'll be curious to see whether President Biden now takes out the mask as a result of this latest CDC guidance. What are you thinking about the fact now that fully vaccinated people can go maskless in many, many situations? Well, my reaction to the CDC's announcement is it's about damn time that we should be following the science and not playing politics. And, and from the beginning of COVID, there's been far too much politics connected to it. Look, when it comes to masks, I've never understood the extreme on either side. I've never been one of those people who said, never wear a mask. I would wear a mask on an airplane when I went to a grocery store, particularly when the pandemic was raging. But once I got my vaccine, once other people were getting vaccinated, I stopped wearing masks. And, and, and I gotta say, I think, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have been playing politics with COVID-19. And, and, and they've been playing politics by keeping schools shut down. The science is absolutely clear. Kids should be in school, in person today. The science is unequivocal on that. But they also were playing politics on masks, that it never made any sense once you were vaccinated to wear a mask. And, and unfortunately, Biden and Harris and the administration kept saying, wear a mask, wear a mask, wear a mask. Even if you're vaccinated, that discouraged a lot of people from getting the vaccine. So I think the message people ought to hear is get the vaccine, stop the spread of the disease. It ought to be voluntary, but you should be encouraged to get the vaccine. And one of the great virtues, when you get the vaccine, you can take the damn mask off <laughs> and, and return to, 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 to regular life. That should encourage millions more people to choose to get the vaccine. We're thankful those masks helped us when we needed them. We're also, <laughs> very many of us are gonna be uh, thankful for the day we can put them down, which seems to be today. Senator, uh, just two hours ago, it struck me a, a tweet that you put out four months into the Biden presidency and we already have and you checked off a border crisis, a gas crisis, a war in the Middle East, and we're on the verge of an inflation crisis. How would you characterize the politics of this moment? Well, look, the first four months of the Biden administration have been the most radical of any administration in history. And, and unfortunately, Joe Biden has decided to hand over the agenda to the extreme left in his party. So the people driving the substance are Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and AOC. And we're seeing $6 trillion in new spending proposed. We're seeing trillions in new taxes proposed. We're seeing the border absolute chaos, the worst it's been in 20 years. And it's getting worse and worse and worse because Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won't enforce the law. And, and, and we're seeing domestically a crisis. We're seeing economically a crisis. The inflation that is coming, when you spend $6 trillion we don't have and you print the money, you create inflation. And then abroad, in just a few months, Biden's managed to undermine our friends and allies, to undermine Israel, to send hundreds of millions of dollars to the Palestinian authorities and, and Hamas, and to promise the Ayatollah Khamenei billions of dollars. And what's the reward for that? Hamas is raining rockets on Israel with money that comes from the Ayatollah Khamenei, and, and, and this is, we are seeing crisis after crisis after crisis because the Biden-Harris policies are radical and extreme, and they don't work. Yeah, Senator, we're, we're just getting some news in from our Jerusalem uh, Fox Bureau. It may not just be Hamas that's raining rockets down on Israel. Uh, Devor Alinsky of our Jerusalem Bureau reports that for the first time during current fighting, rockets have been fired into Israel from Lebanon's territory. Wow. If, Hez if Hezbollah, which is also supported by Iran, sure. is now getting involved, uh, where could this go? I mean, I'm reminded of what happened back in 2006. Look, we are on the verge of a, a full-scale war in the Middle East, and, and it's worth pausing and reflecting what a different place we were in six months ago under the Trump administration. The, the administration and the president made very clear that America stands unequivocally with Israel. We moved our embassy to Jerusalem. I urged President Trump to do that. I was there the day we opened our embassy. We pulled out of the disastrous Obama-Iran nuclear deal, something else that I urged the president to do, and it produced this incredible blossoming, this flowering of peace. It produced the Abraham Accords. You know, I spoke with the foreign ministers and ambassadors of Bahrain and UAE when the Abraham Accords were, were signed, and both said to me almost exactly the same thing. They said, listen, it is clear that America stands unequivocally with Israel. We want to be friends with America, so therefore, we will be friends with Israel. And that's exactly what I had urged the Trump administration, that if we're clear, if there's no ambiguity, it will make it obvious to our friends and our enemies where we stand. 
When Joe Biden came in, his radical politics screwed all of that up. They've been undermining Israel. One of the things they did, so there's legislation I helped pass called the Taylor Force Act. The Taylor Force Act is named after a Texan, Taylor Force, who was a U.S. military veter veteran. He was killed by terrorists in Israel. And Hamas sends money every year to the families of the terrorists who murder Americans and murder Israelis. The Taylor Force Act says we won't send taxpayer money to any government, any organization that pays terrorists to murder Americans or murder our allies. Well, Joe Biden decided to ignore that law, to violate that law, and so he has resumed sending over $100 million to the Palestinian Authority and to Hamas. That lesson is not lost on any of the terrorists, and right now they're raining rockets down on Israel with impunity because they don't believe Joe Biden or Kamala Harris will, will, will do a single thing about it. Senator, I wonder what your message is to those members of Congress that are criticizing uh, the Biden administration, including Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, criticizing the president for standing with Israel, and also Rashida Tlaib, another member of the so-called squad, claiming Israel's promoting racism and dehumanization under apartheid system. Well, look, unfortunately, that, that is the, the driving force in today's Democratic Party. It's the angry socialist left, AOC and Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, who, who are tweeting things that, that, frankly, are indistinguishable from what they'd be saying if they were actually the press secretaries for Hamas. You've got Omar, who is accusing Israel of carrying out acts of terrorism. There is a fundamental difference between a nation defending itself against terrorists and terrorists targeting women and children, which is what Hamas is doing. You know, I'm reminded of something that, that Prime Minister Netanyahu said a number of years ago. And, and, and over the years, Prime Minister Netanyahu and I have become good friends. And he made the following observation. He said, in Israel, we use our missiles to defend our citizens. Mm. Hamas uses their citizens to defend their missiles because they locate in Gaza the caches of missiles in, in, in the basements of kindergartens, in, in sure. hospitals, because they're literally using Palestinian children as human shields to protect the missiles that they want to murder Israeli children with. And, and, and it is disgraceful that you have members of the United States Congress that basically operate as shills for terrorists and undermine Israel. And they undermine Israel so often that after a while you start to say, okay, we, we, we get it. You don't like the Jews. It, it's not subtle. It's not new. But, but it is a very ugly sentiment, particularly to see in the United States Congress. So uh, we're just getting an update on what I, I told you a moment ago, Senator, about rockets being fired from Lebanon. Uh, mayor of an Israeli town near the Lebanese border, according to Reuters. We don't know which town it is, but there's a number of small towns there. Iran, Avivim, Kiryat Shimon is up there, Matula as well. Three rockets were fired, apparently no casualties. So the fact that there's no casualties, that's good news. Let me, let me just switch, if I could, to the gas shortage. Yep. Uh, you tweeted earlier today, welcome to the Green New Deal. But this thing with the pipeline didn't have anything to do with the Green New Deal. I mean, it might at some point in the future. But this is all about not securing our critical infrastructure. What does the White House need to do to ensure that bad actors in places like Russia can't collapse our fuel supply system in the southeast with, with just a single push of a button? Sure. Look, look, there is no doubt that there are real threats to our critical infrastructure and cyber attacks from Russia, from China, from Iran, from North Korea, from other bad actors are a big part of it. And we need to do much more to secure our infrastructure. But I'll tell you, the connection to the Green New Deal it is the vision of Biden and AOC is a vision that on day one in the White House, Joe Biden shut down the Keystone Pipeline. Mm -hmm. They're doing everything they can to shut down oil and gas production in the United States. And, and we're getting a, a, a foreshadowing of what the world of the Green New Deal is like. Shutting down one pipeline, suddenly people can't get gas to put in their cars to go to work. That's just one pipeline. And this is the, the world that, that, that Biden and Pelosi are, are, are trying to force on this country. It, it, it makes no sense. It's dangerous. We need to be instead expanding American energy independence. Today, America is the number one producer of oil in the world and the number one producer of natural gas. That changes the geopolitical chessboard. We used to be dependent on the Middle East 
for oil and gas. Now we're the energy superpower, and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are trying to mess that up. Let me say one other thing also. We were just talking a minute ago about Israel. One of the real challenges Israel faces right now is their Iron Dome missiles, the interceptors, mm -hmm. are taking out these rockets one after the other after the other. I'll tell you something Joe Biden could do today to show decisive presidential leadership. He could stand up and say, we're going to replenish Israel's Iron Dome missiles. By the way, these missiles never are aimed at people. They're aimed at incoming rockets that are trying to murder innocent civilians. The Biden administration needs to act today to ensure that Israel has an adequate supply of Iron Dome missiles. Senator, finally, from the crisis in the Middle East to the ongoing crisis at our southern border, it's been 50 days now in counting yeah. that Kamala Harris has been uh, put in charge of the situation at the border. She hasn't held a news conference. She has not visited the border. I know you're calling it a dereliction of duty. What, what should happen next, and, and, and if she continues to ignore the situation or not visit the border or not hold a news conference, how bad does it get? Look, the, the, there is zero leadership right now to solve this problem. The, the approach of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is, is to pretend the crisis doesn't exist. As you know, just over a month ago, I brought a group of 19 senators down to the border to see firsthand what's happening there. I've been to the, to the Rio Grande Valley many, many times representing the state of Texas. I have never seen it remotely this bad. There were 178,000 people who crossed illegally last month. Every month is higher than the month before. We're on a path to see over 2 million people coming here illegally. We have thousands and thousands of people packed in overcapacity uh, cages, and the Biden cages are bigger and more full that, than they've ever been. In the midst of a pandemic where COVID positivity is over 10%, Joe Biden pretends it doesn't exist. He pretends it's not a crisis. He, he put Kamala Harris in charge. If she's in charge, I mean, goodness gracious, can you imagine if someone put Kamala Harris in charge of a hot dog stand and in 50 days she never went to the hot dog stand? She's done nothing. She literally went to the Canadian border in New Hampshire before she's gone to the southern border. And I've joked, you know, last I've checked, there are not thousands of Canucks streaming across our northern border. She, she, and, you know, there's a reason, Sandra, that neither Biden nor Harris want to go to the southern border, because they know if they come, TV cameras will follow. Mm. And they can't solve this problem, because there's a way to solve the problem. The way to solve the problem is resume building the ball, resume building the wall, and return to the remain in Mexico policy, a successful international agreement President Trump negotiated that resulted in last year we had the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. Pause and reflect on that. We know how to succeed in this because last year, Remain in Mexico produced the lowest rates in 45 years. Joe Biden, in his first week in office, ripped that international agreement to pieces and it's causing this spike. And the reason Biden and Harris won't go to the border is they've promised the far left radical activists that they won't enforce immigration laws, that they won't deport people. And given that, there is no solution to this crisis until they admit their policies are wrong and that they are hurting people. It's not humane. Children are being physically assaulted, sexually assaulted. Women are being sexually assaulted. Disease, crime, this is a humanitarian crisis and it is Joe Biden and his political decisions that have caused it. It's a lot. It's a lot happening. It's a lot for the American people to see happening right now. Uh, Senator Cruz, thank you for all the time this afternoon. Thank you.